Welcome to Key Points for June. This month, our take on the balance in equity markets, is this sustainable? Our views around the new renewed stimulus coming in China to aid their ailing economy. And our take on the pending first ECB interest rate hike since that ill-founded one back in 2011. Is it better time this time round? Now to the first point, we had mentioned last month that equity markets were poised for a bit of a bounce. That indeed seems to be what's taking place now. It had been a torrid first part of this year. We've seen markets still down mid-teens, uh, in some cases down more than 20% in that bear market territory. So there was clearly a sign that investor confidence sentiment had become a bit overly bearish. Now, when we look at the performance in recent weeks, we had seen the S&P 500 down for seven consecutive weeks, the worst performance since uh, 2001. The Dow was even worse. We had eight consecutive weeks of down markets or down Dow, and that had been the worst, believe it or not, since 1923. So clearly investors were overly bearish and they were, they were poised for some sort of recovery. And again, we begin to start to see evidence of this taking place. Now, while we think this bounce can last a fair bit longer, in order to become more sustainable and a longer-lived rally, we still believe that fundamentals have got to shift. We need to see real tangible evidence that inflation is coming back down towards central bank targets. The good news here is core PC in the United States has moved down for two consecutive months. But we also need to see markets repricing the trajectory of interest rates. Now, we are slightly more optimistic than the current market pricing, but we need to see investors moving more in our direction of our more benign, still higher rates, but a more benign trajectory in order for this rally to become something more than a bounce. So right now, we're still in the view that it's a bounce rather than a long-lasting rally. And again, as we keep saying, you have to be prepared for volatility. Now to our second point, the Chinese economy has really struggled this year, of course, as it has been savaged by COVID and the severe lockdowns that we've seen, particularly around Shanghai and Beijing. The good news here is that some of these lockdowns are beginning to ease, but importantly, the authorities are now acting with real vigor. We've had 33 policy announcements already being made. Some suggest it may be as many as 50 this year, and that is really required in order to reshape this economy. Now, importantly, our view is the focus has to be around employment, which has been weak. We're seeing unemployment levels around the, the highs that we saw at the peak of the pandemic, around about 6.1, 6.2%. That has to be brought down. The housing market, which has really been faltering badly this year, remember this is a significant part of household stores of value, uh, their primary asset. And that's very important, again, that we're seeing signs to make that easier to take out mortgages, to support the housing market. And again, we've had rate cuts and measures put in place there to bolster that, very encouraging as well. Elsewhere, we need to also see, again, small, medium-sized enterprises being supported. And all of that does appear to be coming through. Again, we have mentioned this in previous videos, that this is what we really needed to see if the Chinese authorities have to have any chance of hitting their gross target of around 5.5% this year. Still quite a stretch, but actually now we're seeing tangible signs that the focus has shifted from containing COVID towards really reinvigorating their economy, which of course is good not just for the domestic Chinese economy, but from a global growth dynamic as well. Now, turning to our third point, a lot of us remember only too well that interest rate hike by the EC back in 2011, just before, of course, we had the Eurozone crisis, very badly timed indeed. Now the ECB officials have made it clear that they will be moving rates in uh, July and probably again in September, taking rates from the current minus 50 basis points back to zero. Now, we think this is actually quite a constructive move. Negative interest rates had many unintended consequences, so getting back to zero will be important. We also suspect there will be a further rate hike later in the year. Now, importantly, despite the challenges that we face in the global economy, Europe is still holding in fairly well, particularly despite the higher energy prices that are coming through. PMI data suggests that both the manufacturing and particularly the service part of the economy is holding in well. 
So we think that the economy will be, will be able to digest these uh, interest rate hikes without derailing that growth dynamic. But of course, that's something that we need to keep a careful eye on. And the ECB officials still need to be uh, very vigilant about the driving forces around the growth and the inflation dynamic. Remember, as always, you can read the full report on zurich.com forward slash MSME.